In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you multiple techniques for creating a fade transition. This is the first of a two-part series on fade transitions. You can do a lot more than what you might assume at first, and in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to accomplish these transitions by simply adjusting the opacity settings of your clips. So we're going to take this clip and drag it down in track one. And after the young man, we'll have the clip of the books. Drag it and put it right next to that. Let's make a fade transition without using the fade option in the transition room. Most of the time, here's what we do. We'll click on the transition room or press the F8 key. We'll move into the area where we find our fade option. We'll drag and drop it and put it between the two clips and that will accomplish a fade. And so if we move our indicator just before the break and click on play, we find that it moves from one and fades from one to the other. But there are other th ways you can accomplish a fade, one without even using this transition at all. So let's go back to our main screen and we'd like to show you a couple of alternatives and a couple of different looks for fades. What we're going to do first of all is adjust the opacity of the clip on the left. So I'll right click on it and choose Edit Video from the pop-up menu and from the second menu we will click on Enable Fade In and Fade Out. And when we do that we notice that the green line on our clip is changed. This is the opacity setting. It's gone from zero, if we hover over the left keyframe, all the way up to 100%. And then from 100% at the top down to zero at the very end of the first clip. So we'll move our timing indicator near the end and play it. And you'll see it fades down to black. Nice feature. And if we want to match that on the other side, we simply right click on the second clip, do the same process with edit video, enable fade in and fade out, and now it will fade up from black when we're done. So we'll move back and we'll watch it go down into black with a slow fade, and then up. Very nice feature. Now you notice if we use this method, it will automatically do this at both ends of the clip. If you don't want that, you can highlight the clip and then take your left mouse button, hold down the very end keyframe and drag it back up to 100%. And now this clip does not fade in on the left. And likewise, I can do this over here where this clip does not fade in on the right. So I'm not using a fade effect, but I'm using opacity to accomplish that. Now one question people have sometimes is, why does it fade to black? Well, that's the default when you're on track number one. If you want it to fade to any other color, it's not too difficult to make that happen. I'm going to take all the content in track one and simply drag it down to track two. And then what I'm going to do is, in my media room, click on the down arrow and go to my color boards. The other common option is most people could fade to white. You can pick any color in the rainbow, but we'll take this white color board and drop it and make sure it's pretty much directly above the place where our transition takes place. And now because it is, when we move to this location and play our clip, it will now fade not to black, but it will fade to white and then fade back to the second clip from white. So it's a nice way to do either a black or white fade between two clips. There's some other things you might want to know. If you want to restore a single clip to its original opacity, you can simply right click on it, choose Edit Video, and then choose Restore to Original Opacity Level. And now it's back to normal. So this is a way in which you can change the opacity and create a fade without going into a submenu. There's another option you have I should show you about. If I double click on either clip one at a time, I'm on the left clip here, 
If I look on the left side and I drag down to all of my controls, I have one at the end that says fades. Now, it may just show you the word fades, and if the arrow is pointing to the right, you need to click on it so that you can see the sub options. I'm going to click on fade, and now I want to enable the fade out because it's my left clip. If I drag down in my keyframe area, I see what happened. It just created this keyframe here and the other one at the end. Now what I can do here, if I want to control precisely the duration of the fade, all I need to do is highlight the diamond and I can drag it left or right to change the duration of the fade in this particular clip. So I can be very precise here. It's a little longer to get into this menu, but I have a lot more precision in my control. If I don't want to do it that way, now notice we have the same look and feel on our timeline. I can also simply hover over the second to the last keyframe. I'm fading out and I can drag it to the left or to the right to make the fade uh, happen in a longer period of time, more gradually, or a shorter period of time, more abruptly. So this is how you can tweak that function. You can also go back in your PIP Designer and turn off the fades, which will do the same thing. But I like the easy shortcut, which is simply right-click, click Edit Video, and then Restore to Original Opacity Level. But those are a couple of ways in which you can create two different kinds of commonly used fade effects without using anything from your transition room at all, but by just modifying opacity in two clips. Thank you.